over your life. In 1970, the 70s, I was in public school 27. It came over the public address system and notes were given out to all the young kids. New York City had exhausted its breakfast and lunch program budget. Exhausted it. Over the loud system, it said, there'll be no lunch and breakfast in the school. You have to bring your own. 30 to 40 percent of the schools in New York City were empty. Because about 45 to 50 percent of the kids that went to school was going there for breakfast and lunch. Mondays, they serve pizza and Tuesday hot dogs and Wednesday Salisbury steak and Thursday fried chicken, Friday fish. You knew the menu. I would get up early in the morning and go to school and eat the jelly donuts and the, and, and the oatmeal and all the different things and stay for lunch and after lunch was over, I'd go home like I was the head of a great corporation or something. <laughs> but the lunch program had exhausted all of its funding. And so I got up in the morning, that cold winter morning, and I went to the school at 7 a.m. in the morning and there at 7 a.m. in the morning I was sitting on the step and the principal came to the school his name was Mr. Diamond a nice Jewish man and he came and he said George Bloomer what are you doing here so early in the morning I said to him I came for breakfast he said no one told you you didn't get a letter? You didn't hear it over the loudspeaker? The city has no money. Oh, the patience of this grown man with this little kid on the steps. The city's run out of money, we don't have it. At least for the next two weeks and it may even be for the rest of the year. He shook his head, he said, did you have anything to eat? And I said, no. Would you like something to eat? And I said, yes. He moved, postured his head to get the answer out of me that he needed, that I needed. He said, I want you to go to the store for me down at Del Fonte's and get me a corn muffin with cream cheese and a black coffee. Could you do that for me? I said, yes. He said, hold on. He goes into school, he comes out with a list. He gives me the money, he says, and get something for yourself. Get something for you. And so I go and I get me a buttered Kaiser roll and hot chocolate. <laughs> and I come back with the order and he gives me one dollar bill, one dollar, big time. It's 1970, two pieces of candy for a penny, big time, one dollar. Every morning for the next two years, I'd be on the step, get the teacher's stuff, he'd give me five dollars. My mother was here tonight, she would tell you that every Friday, my son came and gave me three dollars. Mr. Diamond was an angel. I was horrible in school, so my mother said, listen, let me tell you something, boy, I want you to get me one good report card. So for 90 days, I worked hard. I got a good corporate report card. I ran from Nelson Street to Columbia, and I ran all the way up the steps to the sixth floor, bust open the door, and I heard her on the phone, and she says, huh? I'm sorry, sir. I don't even have $20 to buy some Franks and beans. 
to put on the table to feed my kids. I don't know where I'm going to get $700 from. She's talking to someone on the phone about my brother, Philip. He's in trouble again. He's in jail. And she needs $700 to bail him out. <laughs> on the day that I need to be celebrated. I said, Ma, here's my report card. Not now, son. Ma, here's my, not now. Here, snatched it and threw it on the floor. When that went on the floor, my heart went on the floor. She went out the door. She found $700 to get my brother out of jail and couldn't find $20 to put food on the table. Your priorities will finance themselves. The reason why it's hard for you to give an offering is because that ain't your priority. It's not what you care about. It's what you shout about, but it ain't what you care about. Because if you cared about it, you break everything that you have to break. Where a man's heart is, that's where his treasures are. And I laid across the couch. I was screaming and hollering. I was crying. I was crying. I was so, so upset. She didn't look at my report card. A knock came on the door. Looked through the peak hole, opened up the door. It was Mr. James, young man from across the courtyard. He worked for the Board of Education, but he was the town drunk. He'd get drunk on Friday and stay drunk from Friday and sober up on Monday morning to go back in the school system. He said, where's your mother? I said, she went out someplace. He said, I'll wait for her. That was okay. He was a nice guy. He came over to the house, played cards and drank alcohol. He went into his pocket and pulled out his bottle of gin pulled the brown paper bag down, opened up the top of it, took a sip of it, put it back on, closed it up, and tightened that brown bag at the neck of the bottle. Bent over to put it in his back pocket and saw a piece of paper on the floor. Went and picked the piece of paper up and looked at it, and looked at me, and looked at it, and looked at me. He said, this is you? And I said, yeah. Hmm. You're a genius, he said. I got to reward you. Went in his pocket and gave me two dollars. He said, every time I see you, I'm going to call you my little scholar. For the next five years, every first of the year, he buy all my school clothes, knapsack for me, up until the ninth grade. In the ninth grade, Mr. James died. And when he died, I dropped out of school. Dropped out in the ninth grade, second grade reading ability and through the perils of life, lost all ability to read or what have you. Learned how to read 16 years ago. Wrote 30 books, four bestsellers. You have an angel yes, yes. and the job of your angel is to bring you into the land that God said you were going to go into. I don't care if you had a baby out of wedlock, you had an abortion, you had miscarriages, you've been beaten up. I don't care if you've been struggling with pornography or whatever the crisis is, all of those things. If you turn it over to God, it will be gold in the bank. He'll use the storms in your life to tell a story to dying men and women. Grab your neighbor by the hand.